what is your spirit animal and why? Oh man, I I feel like I I like go back and forth between two. So I definitely have like in the past year adopted this whole like tiger persona because I bought this like tiger fleece that I wore for like all the winter. So I was just really <laughs> embracing this whole like tiger thing. Nice. Um, so and actually when I was we were in the UK, that's the only jacket I had in February was this like orange like tiger stripe or tiger camo like jacket and and i don't know i bought it in like december january whatever it was and i like wore it all winter and it was just like i just started adopting this tiger not like adopting a persona but i was like anything that was like tiger related i was like i was drawn towards so um the jacket started the tiger thing the jacket started because I, I saw it and i was like oh this is like a bold statement like i don't wear like bright colors I'm, I'm usually a very like plain neutral color person i'm not wearing a lot of like colors um and it's, if i do it's very minimal but I saw it and I was like, man, this is looks, I feel like this looks sick. And I put it on, I was like, it was super comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know if I'm bold enough to wear this. And I was like, because of that, I definitely have to buy this because I need to like be bold to wear this because it's like out of my comfort zone. So yeah, at that point I just started like adopting this whole, like everything was just like tiger or like some tiger stripe or whatever it was. But then I think the, if I had another spirit animal, it probably like normally before all the sort of phase, if you will, <laughs> um, definitely like a wolf. For sure. I, I mean, I think just classic. Um, Lone Ranger. I just, yeah, Lone Ranger. I'm very independent. I'm kind of by myself. Um, I like being out in like habitats that wolves are usually found in anyway. You know, like I like being mountains. I like the cold, I like the snow. Um, so I feel like I kind of fit that vibe a lot more, just even just like what I enjoy and like kind of how I live my life feels that way. And I just think they're, um, I don't know, I think they're just super awesome animals if you will i just i i uh i don't know there's something about it that i just think it's six super six i've always like latched onto it uh every time there's like you know in game of thrones every you know star cat ha character had a, a wolf and i was like of course of course like that yeah yeah exactly so I was just like everything about the starks i was like okay yeah they're in the north they're in the cold the snow i was like if it was me in that show like where i'd want to be what family i'd want to be in obviously i mean obviously everyone would want to be in that i would say anyway but like I wouldn't even regard this family. You you run the risk I mean, <laughs> of not living very long. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess that's a fair point. But I guess for me, it, it was like I had a choice, and it was like I would probably choose to be up there. So that's why I'm, I don't know. That's why I've always latched onto a wolf. But then this whole tiger thing is my my my, my new like alter ego, if you will. So, so yeah, those, like those, are the, those are the two things. So like pop quiz question: Do you know the which famous uh, metalhead or metal band guy is in Game of Thrones? Oh no! Blue. He's one of the. Uh, he has a very minimal. He doesn't have any what lines. He's um. He's one of the what they call the ice people, the walker. Um, you know the zombie kind of people. He's one of them. Oh, the White Walkers. Okay. Yeah, like not one of the top guys. He's just like one of the. You right. Know, you see him for like one split second. It's not much. I didn't even know that was the thing. I just, the only thing I know is that like uh, the mountain is that big uh, Icelandic like powerlifter. Thor, thing, isn't it? Uh, Thor, 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 Thor Bjorgen. Thor, I can never pronounce his last name. So, yeah. but I know that that's the only person I know that outside of like that that's a game for him. Yeah. Uh, no, it's um. He, I think I believe Brent Hines is it is has a cameo as a uh, <laughs> as a as a White Walker. I'm pretty certain. Um, don't quite. Know I didn't. I, I did not know that. I wish I was an extra. In <laughs> <laughs> it's him. Him and Ed Sheeran, as far as I'm aware, are the only two like. What Ed Sheeran was in it? Yeah, he actually has like some lines. I'm pretty sure. Really. Yeah, like I made, I, I, it's been so long since I watched it because, and I kind of blocked it out of my memory because the end was so upsetting, and yeah. I love that show. And I mean, I was like talking about it with someone I think a couple of days ago, and I loved the show, and I just felt like the last season just kind of turned me off from it. And I feel like a last season of a TV show can I think make or break it because, yeah, at least in my opinion, because some some shows is like the, the the end of the show is awful. You're just like I. I just completely tainted the entire thing and and i feel like game of thrones kind of had that to some degree because it was like felt very rushed especially a show that was a slow crawl show the entire time for years and out of nowhere like the last season everything that was we're talking about for years it just kind of like happened in an instinct of like what yeah i think Wait, hold on. on episode four five six then one two three you yeah know, it was, i can't remember how many it was yeah it was not that many but it was just like kind of bumming me out because it was like the entire however many seasons we were just talking about this whole fight and, and then all this like fight over even the internal fight over the actual like throne 
And then all of this like happened, like we're literally in like one and a half episodes basically. Right. And I'm like, wow, like eight, eight, forever many seasons. Mm. I'll just, just kind of build up to this like moment that was like an yeah. instant. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like bummed me out a little bit. So. Well, it's known for being like a slow burn show and then it decides to do everything. Those dragons flew way further than they should have done in one episode. Yeah. It, it was just, it was, yeah. Like, like it was just so much at once. And I was like, wait, and it, I wouldn't, I wasn't mad about when it happened. It was just like, you're so used to the pace of the show to like build up, build up this like dramatic effect that like things yeah. are just happening so quickly. It just felt very rushed. And, and from my understanding behind the scenes is that I guess the, I don't know how true this is, but I guess the people that make it or the writers for it or whatever it is, they were like in the position to do like a star Wars movie. So they like had, a, I guess they rushed to get it off their plate. But then apparently, guys, they got taken away because how bad that last season was. That like oh. they're like, no, no. That, that's what I was told. That's what I heard. I'm not true. It is. It might not be true. It might just be, you know, gossip. But uh, I heard that they were like supposed to get like the a new Game of Thrones, uh, Star Wars movie, and uh, because that game last last Game of Thrones season tanked, which they rushed to do it so they could do that movie. Yeah. They got kind of uh, that's what got pulled from. But again, it, I could be spewing nonsense. So. <laughs> Either way, regardless of that, I was just really bummed by by the end of it. You've uh, and I didn't know I, I forgot Ed Sheeran was in it. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember what scene he has. The um, I remember what I my my spirit animal would be. I'd be a platypus because they're unsuspecting. But I believe again, this might be bullshit. I believe they're venomous. I think they have like a a thing in their foot or something. They can really like, unsuspecting, but then just fuck you up out of nowhere. <laughs> I just <laughs> I quite <laughs> like the idea of that. No, that's definitely interesting. I, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, I did not know that they. I think that's true. Them. It's 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 very believable that that could be bullshit, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, but it must be believable to be true because you know, we, who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of all the things that have happened in the last few years, a platypus being venomous is not the thing, the most unsuspecting thing that could have happened. Not at all. To be yeah, fair. Like was, they've been venomous the entire time. I'd be like, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, I would. I wouldn't argue it. <laughs> So do, from your time in England, do the British people, how do they compare to Game of Thrones British people? <laughs> uh, I would say um, outside of the accent or per se, it's not really the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not yeah. so much in common. I think other yeah, than the accent, yeah, they have the, the northern people have a northern accent. I think that's about it. Yeah, I, I, I know there's like different different accents for different parts of um, the country, so I know that like that's a thing. But yeah, outside of like, I don't really, I mean, yeah, no, I don't think it's about the same. I think it's more similar to being back home. If you just took away the accent, it feels more like I'm back in New Jersey or like in the Northeast. Uh, so that feels more like home than it does Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, what was I going to say? Um, so yeah, I anyway, I've written down lots of important topics to talk about. So <laughs> there we go. So the, the Game of Thrones. I'm just I normally try and make a neat segue, but I I I can't do. You, I don't know if you ever watch South Park when they do those funny segues where he'll mention some random thing and then just find his way around to the topic of conversation or whatever. I can't, I can't, I'm not that smart. So so, uh, um, but complete absolute complete change of subject. But um. I, one thing that made me want to talk to you that I, I th thought was really interesting from just following you generally, A, was I saw you guys in, uh, I can't remember when you played in Birmingham in the UK, um, but it was really cool. So mm -hmm. uh, that's that's when I first sort of, you know, I obviously heard you guys and then, um, but I, I, I liked how I've sort of followed you on Instagram and how sort of open you are about certain experiences you have um, mm -hmm. with your sort of relationship with music and um, it sounds like just life in general, but particularly your relationship with like things like songwriting, which obviously is um, when you're so inherently tied to something as it's you know your, part of your career, um, mm -hmm. it really can be something that defines you. You know, your relationship to that thing can really um, sort of be a defining, can really change how you think, how you feel, and everything. And um, I just w wanted to kind of ask, what is there anything that prompted that kind of openness with your sort of um, you know, you know the way you talk about being frustrated at certain processes or upset at certain things um is there a reason for that or is it something that happened that made you think i want to talk about this stuff particularly because a lot of people don't yeah i think that's the reason why i do talk about it is because i want to demystify 
what being a musician is. I think musicianship for some reason just feels like this, like, um, or musicians feel like this unattainable, un, like not lifelike person, right? And I, and I think my whole life going to shows, like you finally see like a band that you like and you're like, oh my God, this person's finally in front of me. And like, th there are mysteries to you, you know? And, and I think, um, I guess a big part of for me was just wanting to um, just remove the veil, if you will. Um, I think a lot of it is, I mean, I think a persona is very common in everyone's life. We all wear masks to some degree, so it's very easy to hide and, and you could put on a mask in any sort of fashion. Um, for me, I'm just trying to remove that and just like speak on like my experiences. And, and I think as a musician, another aspect of it is like you have to be vulnerable. You have to put yourself out there and, and by doing it more often and having that sense of vulnerability of like writing a song, uh, putting, you know, aspects of yourself or your personality into it like you have to be vulnerable you have to show like your authentic self and to not speak in that same way when you know you're writing a song with that purpose like it just feels like it, it doesn't really kind of connect to me so for me I was trying to do because being a musician to me at least feels like you're very vulnerable I think why not extend that to like speaking on it like and, and, and having a sense of vulnerability is not like a sense of weakness I think displaying the stuff that like makes you human doesn't make you any less um, and, uh, that's just kind of where my come from is. And I, and I think a lot of it started more frequently in the past few years with like teaching more often, cause I would have, uh, students ask me about stuff and I would just be honest. I'd be like, this song was hard to write or this, you know, I have my moments of ups and downs and hearing a lot of students like come to me and having this like perspective on like guitar players or musicians or whatever. And I'm just like, you, do you really think that like, I just sit down and write a song in an hour and it comes out like perfectly flushed out. And like, that just means I'm a better musician than you are. Like, absolutely not. Like I struggle the same way that anyone else does. And I just want to talk about that because like, I think we all struggle in life, regardless of in the, in the micro sense of a musician or in the macro sense. And I think um, speaking on it doesn't, I think it becomes helpful because I feel like it just normalizes it, it, it humanizes it and it makes it feel like, oh, right, this is a person. Because I think a lot of people like talk to us or talk about us as if we're not like real, we're not there. I just like, I get messages, I get stuff that's just like very, very rude. And I respond back to it. I'm just like, you wouldn't say this to anybody. So why are you just treating me as if I'm like, what gives you the right to say this? Because, you know, I'm still a person at the end of the day, just because I play in a band that you like or, or people like or, or whatever it may be, like, does it mean that like, I'm <laughs> not a person just like anybody else? And I approach myself as being very humble and just being like we're all on the same page like i'm not up here and you're down here like i, I very much look at everyone i die because when i come home from being on tour and i go to the grocery store or i go out to dinner no one knows who the hell i am and i try to remember that you know like i'm not like there's not a, a flock of people waiting for me because they know i'm going to this restaurant or they're like oh he's going grocery shopping on a sunday no one knows that and no one's gonna and, and, and i try to remind myself just because in a room people see me in a different perspective like i bring myself down like we're still humans we still go through stuff we still have emotions we still have good days bad days um and i'd rather share that than just be like look at me this like mysterious unattainable like i you know whatever it may be and i just never really was interested in that i'd rather i've always found it interesting when i would hear about artists that i looked up to talking about stuff that like I dealt with because I felt like valid in that because I, I didn't feel like I was alone in dealing with struggles or dealing with things or, or whatever it may be and uh, I kind of want to offer that same perspective to other people. Yeah, I hopefully, think. Hopefully, hopefully, I answer that question. I don't know if I was just rambling. No, it's, rambling, no, it's but... all good. No, you've 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 more than answered it, but in a good way. Um, it's uh, I I think it's what you what you sort of touched upon that the it's harmful in two ways because you've obviously in terms of this unrealistic, you know, the, the the unrealistic expectation of what it is to be a musician, it's harmful for the people who want to pursue that. And then it's mm -hmm. also when you get there and you realize it's not that, it's like, it, there's this that almost like second, it's like the another kind of damaging moment where it's like you can spend your whole life working towards something feeling frustrated about it because you think, oh, they're this superhuman person. And then you get there and and, and you're not that you know um you're mm -hmm. still just a human being and um weird analogy but i i remember um when i when i was finishing up uh, school um and i was 
I, I was I didn't hate school in particular. I was just really fed up of the, the, the you know you feel very much you're like you're on the you're sort of on the train and you you don't you're not steering it. You're just you're kind of you're going with it, you know, and and mm -hmm. you have some control over what maybe you study. But like I felt like okay, uni is going to be that experience for me leaving school and going or i suppose you guys call it college don't you um but like um in my head i was like oh that's gonna be different and new and exciting and i, I don't think i was sort of depressed particularly in my last year of school but like i did find it quite difficult and then moving to uni and it suddenly that bubble burst where i was like oh it's not actually yeah you know, yes i'm still a human being like think i've not i'm not a new person just because i'm in a new place you know um and uh i, I found that was quite a bubble burst moment in a weirdly sort of relatable way um i don't know if that sounds relatable but it feels no, it definitely does it definitely <laughs> yeah. does because the, the first time that we finally like broke out of being a local band we started getting like signed to a label and getting like you know getting a manager and getting a booking agent and getting like a first tour and i remember like that all happened like within like a we released the ep malficium back in like 2013 going into 2014 and all this stuff like happened within like a short period of time and this is something that like we as a band have always been looking for like oh man can't wait to break it out can't wait to just finally get acknowledged by the industry you finally get signed to a label you finally get like on these rosters with other artists that you look up to and you finally get on those tours and then it all happened and i was just like i don't feel any different i'm still doing the same thing that i was doing three months ago i'm still hanging out with the same people i'm still doing living the same life and i was like that was like the first time that really like you're talking to this bubble first because you're because you're thinking about this like in this like romanticized way where it's like oh my god once i finally get this thing like my life is going to be that much better and i just don't think that really works um personally at least and i think that headspace uh to me like you're saying could be very damaging because then you come to that point and you think everything should change and you should change and everything else like that but it's like these circumstances are not going to change you i think we as people change in order to accomplish these circumstances and they're just a ripple effect of, of, of who we are and i was waiting for these external situations to happen in order for me to feel like good about myself Well, you finally get on this tour you feel a sense of oh wow we're you know whatever we're, we're worth being here or whatnot and when i looked at music and, and just life in that sense i just felt very let down by like waiting for these external circumstances to occur and in order to feel good about like myself but like it didn't change who i was and and uh or at least at least not me i mean other people it might it, it may change you and it might go to your head and whatnot but for me i was just like i'm still the same person i'm still doing the same thing i'm still going to the same places i'm hanging out with my same friends like you know and uh on one hand it was like kind of I was definitely let down, but on the other hand, I, I like that because uh, I not I like being let down, but I like the fact that like I'm still the same person because I feel like then I don't know I feel I don't have any ex expectation and I feel like I'm just doing the things that I want to be doing regardless, and I can still be the same the same me and not have to be like oh my life's gonna change because I got on this tour like it it does change, but it's not like my view of it or 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 I, I don't have this like romantic like kind of thing that I, I expected when it when it came with um get these opportunities and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it definitely, it, it, I try to, again, back to kind of circling back to what we're talking about. I try to no, to circle back at all. It can just yeah, yeah, it, forward yeah, try, try, or whatever direction. I, tr I try to demystify it all and I try to, my best to just explain it in a way that's like realistic. Um, and I don't know, the whole like glamorizing or, or uh, what's the word, like, I can't really think of the correct terminology I'm looking for right now, but just a whole, just like building yourself up to be this thing. And you have to like be this like star, if you will, or whatever it is, because like you play in a band, I'm just like, I'm just very turned off by that. I think it's a very uh, dry dick uh, thing. It's just like, you're, it doesn't matter to me. Like it doesn't really, at the end of the day, like when everything's said and done, like I'm not going to care about that. And uh no, and I just don't want to be seen in that light. I'd rather just like go out and do the things that I enjoy doing and still be me and still be like honest and still be myself. And I, and I just think any sort of just egoic, arrogant approach to it all is just, I, I don't know. I just, I'm just very turned off by it personally. So I, I try to bring a, a sense of human nature to, to my explanations of it all. And, and uh, maybe it's not the most fun. <laughs> maybe it's not the most like, uh, 
uh, like an easy sell, if you will. But um, yeah, I just I, I just prefer it because it's, it's just more realistic, you know, and and it's more honest, and, and rather than just kind of making up some story that like sounds cool to say. Yeah, well, it's it's hard to um, it's bre- it's about breaking that cycle, isn't it? Because you start when you start the cycle, you know, you again we go you go through this thing of thinking, of having expectations of what this potential career life choice will will look like. And if yeah. you base it off of what you see online, you're never going to get there. Um, and then, of course, when you if you do get to that or get further along the line, I've seen lots of. So there was something I saw the other day. Um, I was because uh, I post like little uh, clips from the podcast on on reels and TikTok and stuff. Um, and I found myself in the rabbit hole that is TikTok. Um, and I was just scrolling through, and there was a guy playing the guitar, and it was one of those, you know, one day on the guitar, one year, three years, five years. And he, like, obviously, he's very good. Um, mm-hmm. But it's one day he just basically didn't, he just, like, played a sort of messy chord. He couldn't really do it. But then it made right. skip to one year. And he was doing all this, like, really quite technical stuff for a year, like stuff that you could do but most people that have normal lives do not have time to to like i it would take some serious practice to be that good in a year kind of thing and then the three five and ten years were just like the tiniest bit better than that basically um and i just i just felt i couldn't help but think that this is just really harmful but also the guy that made that i can't help but think probably felt the need to show some sort of look at me look at what I can do. This is what I did in a year, even if maybe you didn't do it in a year kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sort of, I'm not particularly hating on it, but I do think it's maybe a, a harm, a reflection of a harmful kind of cycle that you, that kind of comes about from all of this. Um, and I, I'm, you know, I've, I'm always guilty of like, if I put a video of me playing guitar or something, there's always that voice in your head, just like, you know, oh, what are people going to think of this? Maybe I should, oh, I'll just chop that bit out or I'll like, you know, um, or I'll edit this or something, you know, and it's, um, it's, it's always tempting, um, to, to kind of change, you know, try and augment these things you put online. Um, but, but I think, um, what, another thing that really grabbed me was when you were saying about how music, again, another, I, I actually, I, I really, like I said, I really admire your, your Instagram, the, the way you put these things out there. And I, um, it certainly makes talking points nice and easy to find as well. <laughs> I don't know what to talk about. Um, but, uh, I, I liked what you said about sort of music reflecting your personality. You know, it's a reflection of of, of what you kind of put into it. Um, and I, was, I, I guess my sort of fairly straight up question for you would be, what do you think your music says about you as a person? Oh, I mean, I want to touch upon something you mentioned before I answer that, okay. is that uh, you're mentioning like the whole like uh, the video of the person being like over this period of time they've progressed and when, so when I had my students, a lot of them were just not really referring to like the whole like TikTok, but more so like seeing guitar players on Instagram or in YouTube. And a lot of it is very deceptive. And, and, and they would think that like because of like video editing or audio editing and there's a lack of like honesty there, like they, they would, you would have this sort of like you develop a not good enough sort of kind of conversation to some degree. It's just like, well, I'm not good enough because this person can play this song one take all the way through and i couldn't even like i don't even know how to i couldn't even play even this at 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 20 percent of the speed of it um and and i've had a lot of students come to me about that and that kind of got me thinking about it more often because i was just answering that question they would just feel like very like down on themselves or not putting up videos or feeling like they're not good enough and like yes maybe you're not 100 percent of the way there but like also take I, i was trying to get to people like take what you're seeing on the internet with a grain of salt because there is a lot of magic and there's, there is a lot of uh, adjustments that can be made, you know, like, uh, and I'm glad people are spotting that because I think years ago, like when people were doing playthrough videos and people were doing like stuff like that, you, you would think that this is like done true and this is the actual audio, but they're just miming a playthrough um, or like they're not, or, or the audio is edited and it's adjusted and everything else like that. So, and or then I also tell people, I'm like, you know, you also don't know what's going on behind the scenes with with the musician you don't know how long they've been practicing this thing for they could be practicing this thing for literally three months and then what you're seeing is you're seeing the final take you didn't see all the videos that are deleted on their phone or all the videos that are deleted off their camera because like i've even done that like i'll take a video thinking i'm like oh i got this part nailed and i can't wait to post it on the internet and then i watch it i'm like this is not as good as i want it to be 
and then it takes me a couple more days to finally get it. But you're seeing the end result. You're not seeing the stuff that I've done before that to get myself there. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go pick up, pick up my guitar, play one of my own solos, nail it one take, and here's the video. Yes, you're consuming it in that sense, and, and we're making up this own story, but you don't know what's happening like all that time behind the scenes. You don't know how much time I've spent practicing it. You don't know how many how many video takes I've taken. You don't know how many uh you don't know if the audio is real or not or, or whatever it may be. Like, you know, it's like, oh, it's just you're just putting your faith and your trust that, oh yeah, this is this is honest and authentic. Um so I try to like I ha I try to demystify a lot of a lot of that with my students where it was like explaining to them like just take everything with a grain of salt. And even if it is true to what you think it is also try to be mindful of like what has gone on to accomplish that because if someone's playing something super challenging and technical and whatever it may be like you have to put in work to get there and it wasn't just like it just fell in their lap and they were able to accomplish it it was very much like a lot of time effort and uh ability to focus on that and like when i see it from that light it makes it way more empowering because then it's just like oh i just need to spend time working on this and i can accomplish this sort of stuff so it makes it way more you know you kind of get what you give like what if you put in a lot of practice and working towards something, you will achieve better results more most likely. Um, it's not some sort of like some people have it and some people don't, because people have told me that my entire career of playing guitar, it's like, oh, it's, you know, some people just have it, some people don't. And I'm like, I find that absolutely bullshit. Like, I'm sorry. And I'm not going to live in, a, I'm not going to live in a world where it's just like, oh, well, you either got it or you don't. And like, yes, maybe some people are more prone to learning quicker or they have a better ability to understand it a lot faster. But like, there's, I think it doesn't, it, it, it removes the idea that people can actually put the work into if they want to and, and and removing that and just going based off of this like by chance gift if you will just makes it not fun and it's just not a world that i'm I'm looking to create where it's like oh either you got to roll the dice either some people have it and some people don't and, and I, I choose not to believe that and again maybe that's ignorant but uh for me it's just that's not a world i want to live in so i just see what i see on the internet as as trying to take it for what it is and try to understand what it is and and if, if they are accomplishing the thing that i'm looking to accomplish then like there's no they're no different than me they just spend more time practicing this thing and i tried to explain it to my students in a, in a, in a plethora of ways because they would get so bummed out by like i can't play this at full speed it's just like that's okay like just take your time there's no reason to rush to get to that or or this is not as good as someone else's video and just like someone else's video has nothing to do with you someone else's content someone else's song someone else's what they're doing has nothing to do with you and just be excited for the fact that like you can play this part or you can learn this song or you, you have the courage to even put turn the camera on and film yourself doing that like that's a win you know what i'm saying like a win to be able to like have again the vulnerability of like opening up your phone taking your camera filming yourself watching it going this is good enough and then putting it online for the world to see like that's a lot of courage and that takes a lot of skill and even if you make a mistake and someone wants to like criticize you for that mistake it's just like that's okay like I, to me it rolls off me some a lot of times because it's like it took me a lot of effort to be able to accomplish this and you're just going to like criticize that i don't care like it because it, there's a lot more wins happening there that i could have not done i could have been like not even open up the camera because i'm like i don't want to document myself or i could have watched the video and been like this is not good enough so i'm just going to delete it or have the video and and hold on to it and just never post it and only show it to like my four friends that know that they're going to say good things about it anyway like i put myself out there and, and showed it to people that may have the ability to rip into it or or criticize it or say negative things and and i think that just kind of goes back to that like vulnerability of just kind of putting yourself out there like with no armor and and uh and i think that is a skill in and of itself regardless if you made a mistake and you didn't slide or you missed a hammer on or 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 one of the notes was out of tune or the bend was not perfect like fuck off like just put up a video play guitar enjoy it and if someone wants to say something like they have bigger problems that if you're gonna watch someone put up a video and just go, I gotta say something negative about this, instead of seeing like all the positive things about this and all like the things that it takes to do this. Cause again, if I see something that I don't like, my first thing is like, shut up, <laughs> you know, like keep your goddamn mouth shut. Like it doesn't really serve the world. It doesn't help anyone because I, as a musician, I don't wanna take tear down another musician. Like that doesn't, that doesn't help anybody. Um, and, uh, yeah, to me, I just like see these people just because the fact they're like armchair philosophers who've never played a note a day in their life just be like, I got to say all my thoughts because of the fact that I have a Spotify account. <laughs> I qualify as uh, <laughs> Yeah, I qualify as an expert because I, I've listened to music and it's like, yeah. oh, nice. I've been to so many restaurants, I couldn't cook you a nice fucking filet mignon. I'm sorry. I, I have. 
an amazing <laughs> lamb masterman curry sat in my kitchen right now. Just yeah. got to change the subject that I cooked. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of it, and I had to share it. There you go. That's my. That's me share. Although to be fair, no one's going to taste that, so I could just be lying. It's all. It's all right. coming in. It's all. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. Um. I think what the most important thing you said for me is the like the simple fact of like whatever someone else is doing, you know, what's that got to do with you? Like, and not in the not, not in the sort of mind your own business way, in the sense that like, um, uh, so I I recently chose to leave uh, a band that I've been in for a few years. I, I started the mm -hmm. band, um, and, and I kind of I've there's always a bit in my head where because th we have we. I wouldn't say we found like success in any way, but like we kind of started to get a few cool things happening. Um, but it just wasn't working for me. So like, but, but I keep, I know what's going to happen is I need to, if they, if, cause they've got another guitarist sorted now and I'm sure they'll be doing stuff in the future. Um, and I've got to try and look at that without, cause if they start to make, make a success of it, you know, even if they make it really big, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm going to obviously always have to look at that and be like, there's always going to be that bit in my head that's like, oh, that could have been me. But then I'm trying to kind of keep that, I don't want to say zen, but you know what I mean? That kind of inner calm of like what someone, what's happening in someone else's life is nothing to do with me, even if I was closely related to it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, to try and have, because ultimately no, someone else's success is no bearing on what you do really, does it? So it's, the whole idea of I'm trying to compare myself to myself yesterday a bit more often now, you know, um, I think that's the only way you could, cause I just figured that's the only way you could do it. Cause even people that you're in a similar situation to in some, one way, another part of their life might be so totally different that you just can't compare even, you know, I know other guitarists that have played the same time as amount of time as me and are doing better than me, you know, for whatever reason, but I, you know, I don't know what, what their lives are like. So I'm just, Trying to... You don't know, and and I think that uh, I just tell people that we're like speaking of Game of Thrones, right? <laughs> we'll we'll use as a I, I think that it's like sorry, I missed it. what, what like, did you say? Sorry, I said speaking of like Game of Thrones, right? I'll, oh yeah, I okay, come on. I, I I use metaphorically, just like yeah. If someone, if I've been watching the show from the get go, right? Like from season one, I've watched every season. I may be on like season seven or season six or whatever, and I may have a friend that's on season one. Just because I've watched up to season seven doesn't mean that I'm superior to someone else. I just know more of the story than they do at that point. And I just see that we're all on these journeys. We're just at different parts of the story. And I may be just further along or reading a book and just like, oh, I may have read this a lot. I started reading this a lot longer. Or we were at the same time, but I was reading more of it because I, I didn't have other things to worry about. I didn't have life to worry about. I didn't have to worry about like other circumstances that I have because other circumstances in life do play a part to it. You may have less time because you work a demanding job or you may have less time because you have you have other things that maybe other people don't have, you know, like someone may be like, had the, you might start a guitar at the same time, but they may have excelled past you. But like, you also may have other things outside of music that they don't have. Maybe they don't have a social life. Maybe they don't have like any other thing else other than just, I play guitar in my bedroom. And I'm not diminishing it, but we, we also don't know the circumstances and we make choices and sacrifices that, you know, aid or hurt us if you will but part of make part of being adult is being okay with those decisions we made and that your responsibility as an adult to be like owning those decisions and yeah i don't think anyone else is what anyone else is doing means anything about us but it's very easy to get caught up in that trap it's very easy to go okay uh they're doing more than me you play this like comparing comparing thing and it's just like that doesn't work and then and then and it becomes hard to leave in the other direction because you'll look at someone, you'd be like, where do I stack up on this person? Do I stack up here where I'm above them so I feel more safe and secure because I'm a better musician than they are? Or do I feel less than because like they're a better musician than me and I feel like I feel like I'm shit? And it's just like this has nothing to do with anything. It's just like this is where you were, like you're saying yesterday, and this is where you are today. And that's the only thing that's important. It has nothing to do with like another musician on tour. Cause I used to do this years ago. Like I'll go on tour and be like, I think I'm the best guitar player on this tour. And like, you'd feel like safe and secure and like confident and you walk around a little more arrogant because comparing is more arrogant, not confidence, like fake confidence. It's just, it's, it's based off of the room that you're in, not based off how you view yourself. And then there's tours I go on where like, I was the worst guitar player on that tour. And I felt very like, I felt, I felt that. I was like, I feel very shit and, and whatever it may be. But I think viewing it in that comparing way where like, if you, if you're above someone, you, you know, you feel, you feel good about yourself or if you're below someone you feel like you're shit it just doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't matter i think it's like harmful i think if i am on a tour where like you know people look to me as if i'm you know a good musician 
my aim on that tour is to help other people out if they have questions for me or if they if they want to improve and like you know i try to do that i try to do that the best i can if someone i want to help other musicians the same way that all the musicians helped me because when i was on a tour where like everyone was like great i was asking everyone all these questions of like how do i get better what do i do what are you doing differently how are you approaching this like i was a sponge because like that helped me out. Like, even though I was like viewing myself as less than, I was like, well, how do I build myself up? What are they doing? Maybe they maybe they know something that I don't know. And putting your ego to the side to be like, how can I become better? Because the end result is becoming better. It's not being better than somebody else. It's being better than myself. I just I just asked everyone questions. And then on tours when when uh, people were doing the same to me, like it was awesome because I want to help. I want to I want other people to kind of do the stuff that I did. You know, or like asking me questions and helping them out and, and whatnot. And I just learned that comparing ourselves to others, especially other musicians, is so stupid and it serves nothing. It's like, I know that we were in bed in this like sort of like sports kind of competitive edge where like, if someone has something, I have, I don't have the same thing or like I have to win and they have to lose sort of like, that's like how the idea of sports works. But like, it doesn't work with music and art. Like there's, there's enough space for everybody. And and because someone has something doesn't mean you can't get anything. And I think it's just so stupid to see it that way. And just because someone is excelling at the instrument, one, doesn't mean that you can't. Or two, it doesn't mean anything about you. It doesn't mean anything less about you. It doesn't mean that, like, you're flawed or you're, or, or you're um, what's the word? You are uh, you're not good enough or you'll never be good enough or, like, this is not the right path to take. Like, it means nothing. What other people do means literally zero about you. And uh, I try to remind myself and like, I'm glad that you have the perspective of like comparing yourself to yesterday. And like, I guess people tell me, you know, oh man, you guys are doing, doing this better than other people. And, and I right then and there, I'm like, I have nothing to do with other people. Like, I just glad that we're doing this better than ourselves. I don't care, not that I don't care. It's just like, it's not a conversation. I'm not looking to do this in this competitive way where it's like, I need to be better than the bands I go on tour with. That's so stupid and so harm, harmful. And like, I know that like, it sounds weird to say that, but like that conversation does exist. Those conversations do happen. People are saying those things. People are comparing themselves to other bands in their genre being like, how do I stack up against this? And it's like, just be in competition with yourself. Write a better record than you wrote before. That's it. Play it, write a better song than you wrote before. That's all that it matters. And again, from your perspective, because other people will sit there and tell you that they prefer older material and you can't control that. So just be like from you looking in the mirror being like, am I better than who I was yesterday? Yes or no? And the answer is yes. Awesome. Keep doing that. The answer is no. Then figure out what you have to do. Mm. I think um, the, well, I, again, I, I think um, what what's worth kind of sort of noting as well is that these, um, because I'm, I feel like I'm sort of acutely aware of some of these things in my own behaviour. You know, like I'm kind of, um, I know I, I catch myself doing thinking things, or, or um, yeah, you know, catch myself thinking, oh, they're doing this, or I'm not doing this, that, or the other. Um, so you know, it's, it. I think the, the real, um, what's the word? Uh, um, there's kind of this, this separation where I'm aware that i'm doing i'm thinking these sort of negative patterns but and trying to change them and, and it doesn't always I, I you know sometimes you just find yourself wallowing a bit and I, I guess my question is how do you or or do you or have you found a way at all of when you catch yourself in these moments of oh that guy's better than me or oh i'm better than that guy you know whatever when you catch yourself in that comparison moment have you found any ways to get yourself out of that do you still find yourself getting locked into it like what's your kind of um, it's gonna, it can happen, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like it, it doesn't happen. It just, sometimes it's, I just catch, I'm able to catch myself. So, and there's definitely been times where I've deleted Instagram off my phone because I'm just looking at a bunch of great guitar players and I'm not doing this and it like cripples me, you know? And I'm just like, I can't watch this. Cause it's just like, it, and, and, that's, and that has nothing to do with anybody else. It, it, it's everything to do with my perspective on it. Instead of looking at it being like, at, at, as like inspiration of like what is a possibility because like when I see musicians doing cool stuff on the instrument I'm like that just gives me evidence of what is possible and you know when I look at it from like a more positive like lighthearted way it's like cool like this is a possibility but when I see it from a very like crippling egoic like kind of ego shattering perspective like it's definitely it's harmful and then you're just like I don't want to look at this and and then you play this comparative game and then it's either like you feel less than and then when you feel less than, you're trying to look for other opportunities where you feel greater than to like overcompensate. And it just doesn't become helpful. But for me, it's just really checking in with myself and, and, and understanding 
like when I am like we were describing like the observer of like recognizing these thoughts it's just like okay they're simply just thoughts and they don't mean anything we're making meaning out of it like you're just thinking these things and, and I allow myself to just have those moments um, I allow myself to have those thoughts and like I don't judge myself for having them I try to like understand and recognize them I try to and I guess for me it's it's understanding what is and I just try to bring myself back down to especially in a situation where like I'm comparing myself where I feel like I'm less than I look at okay well how are you in this situation like what are you responsible for like are you responsible for you're feeling less than on the instrument because you haven't been practicing enough that's not, that has nothing to do with somebody else are you feeling not responsible because you've been busy with other things because you can't so that's why you can't practice or you can't rehearse or you've been so preoccupied on other things that you can't do these things or is you know what is it and 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 why are you feeling this way and i try to question that i try to challenge it i try to understand it and i try to just bring it back to myself as like how am i responsible for this like why am i feeling like this and what can i do to not saying to avoid it but what can i do to kind of work through it um so that's that's a big thing for me it's just really challenging and questioning and trying to understand why i feel that way you know if i feel less than i go okay what have i been doing have i not been practicing guitar then yeah then that's your answer adam have you only been practicing the same stuff? So like you haven't expanded outside. Cool. There's your answer. Maybe focus on doing other things outside of just playing the same stuff. Um, and just having a sense, a sense of understanding for yourself, for me, helps me a bunch because uh, it doesn't get me to like beat myself up. Because it's very easy to just take out like the stick, beat yourself with it and just go, I suck, I'm shit. They're better than me. What's the point? Like that's an easy route. Like it's very easy. And it's like to some people probably like gratifying, it, gratifying, right? The hard thing is it's kind of like look at it and be like, okay, why do I feel this way? What's caused me to feel this way? What is, what am I doing or not doing that's getting me to feel this way? Am I also preoccupied in other avenues of my life that maybe is taking me away from this thing or, you know, whatever it may be. So that's usually my, my starting point is try to have an understanding as if like someone's explaining it to you. Not like you like talking to yourself, but if a friend came to you and was like, I'm not feeling whatever about something. And then you have that sense of grace and empathy of like, well, of course you're not feeling this way because you've been doing A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, or you haven't been doing that, not in a shameful way, but like, so why would you be feeling good if you haven't been doing these sort of things because you've been experiencing, you know, whatever. So I try, I try to like talk to myself as if I'm talking to a friend going through something and try and, and give them a, a more comforting set of advice rather than if a friend came to me upset because of whatever, I like me, I'd be an awful friend being like, yeah, you're shit, don't even bother doing it. Like, that's an awful approach. And at least I think so. I would, or if that was my friend's approach, I probably would not really go to the mentoring situations in times of need. But I try to approach them as if, like, I'm trying to be comforting and being, like, well, understanding and validating and, and giving them a load of empathy in that moment. And I try to do the same, why not offer that same for myself? Yeah, it's, it's about, I think a lot of it is about, um, we're all too good at, uh, at enduring like medium discomfort seemingly forever but actually uh, facing the, the the greater discomfort in changing something in your life is the it is the trickier thing to do because i i think we you know say if you rated discomfort points out of 10 you know if if you were a constant like six just being unhappy with your life but change, doing something to change it might be an eight out of 10 on, on the discomfort scale. And I don't quite understand it, but as people, we're not so willing to go f through that eight out of 10 discomfort moment to take away that six out of 10 discomfort that's just going on all the time. Um, and I don't, I, I don't have an answer for how we change that, you know, I guess because we're so obsessed in the moment that they're so aware of things in the moment that that when when you want to change something it feels very immediate and painful and actually i think um there's got to be some sort of shift somewhere particularly with musicians because I mean, mental health is such a sort of um mm -hmm. it's 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 uh causes a lot of trouble for people particularly in creative industries and, and i mean like um i don't know what the i like i said i don't have the answer i'm not trying to be such a doomsday uh no 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 but being think, aware uh, of it is a good thing i think yeah i think um it's crazy what we get comfortable, like what we find comfortable, even in the discomfort, we've grown comfortable to the discomfort. Mm -hmm. And in moments when I feel like you're already feeling uncomfortable, like why push that boundary to feel more uncomfortable? Like that's just a very logical way of thinking of it. 
when realizing like that area of discomfort will kind of push you beyond that feeling of initial comfort, uh, discomfort. But yeah, I mean, um, it is, I always, I guess when I, you know, dealing with just with mental health stuff, I just think that like, it is very strange what we become comfortable to and things that like logically you're like, this makes no sense. Like stuff that like I am comfortable to is like, you would never want to be comfortable with it, you're, but you're so used to it. And you're so, and it's a challenge to break the cycle. And, and even just the act of like trying to change it, like, yeah, it's hard at first because you've been doing something a certain way for X amount of years that like now trying something for the first time, it's going to be really hard, but it just feels like the more you do it, the more, the, the better you get at doing it, that maybe it affects you a little bit less or the window of that discomfort is not as long as it used to be. Maybe the window used to be this long. Now the window is maybe a little bit less or, or it used to happen more frequently for this long than it happened a little bit less only for this long. And I feel like for me, that's, that's an improvement. Um, and I think that like life is very uncomfortable and it's kind of rolling with it, but you don't want to, um, for me, it's like you don't put yourself in like immense amount of discomfort because you feel like you have to, where it's just like, you're like a masochist where you have to like, that's, that's not fun either. Like, and again, maybe that's maybe might be productive, but it's going to be damaging to some degree. Cause that's kind of, that's kind of how I used to treat myself. It was just, I was just beating myself to a bloody pulp to get myself across the finish line. And like, yes, I was getting across the finish line. I was improving at, as a musician. I was getting better at whatever I was doing, but like, it was so mentally taxing that like it's, I would have like a a period of time like working on something because I was beating myself to a pulp. But then after a couple of weeks or whatever it may be, I'm just like, I am so mentally exhausted from like telling myself I'm shit as a, a way to get better at something that I'm like, this is not fun for me anymore. And there has to be a better way to uh, to approach it. So um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the uncomfortable, you have to be a little uncomfortable because I think comfortability will keep you stuck and, and, and some people are okay with, with, with that. Some people, they don't want to take the, the step outside their comfort zone and outside their box. And, and that might, might, might be just doing something differently than they never done before. And that's a challenge, but I think it's, uh, for me, at least it's helped me in, 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 in my life is, is getting out of that comfort zone. And, and again, like I said, going from a six to put yourself in eight, which is really uncomfortable, but then eventually that six kind of might go down to a four or and you know but again the short-term temporary relief like especially when you, it does feel really painful like you don't have really an interest in making things more painful yeah i i know i know so many people that um and i do it myself as well um where the the the, the sad kind of thing is that obviously the more discomfort you're in generally speaking um it would be anxiety depression any number of things um you need those short-term we don't maybe you don't need maybe it's not what you need but you feel like you need those short-term fixes you know to to get you through the um mm -hmm. the hard times and then of course those aren't the things that help long term so it's kind of it's it's very sick i find these things are very cyclical in both directions and it's quite it's so hard to break that so um it's uh again it's 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 challenging but hopefully hopefully conversations like this you know people can listen and go if it just prompts a little bit of a, oh, maybe I should change that or something, that'd be good. Um, yeah, but it, it changes hard. It's not easy, but yeah, I think I think that's kind of like my whole point. Like my whole initial thing is just like by talking about it, by bringing it to light, may help somebody down the road. And, and instead of just being like, oh, I'm great, I never make a mistake, and everything's been easy for me. Like if I viewed musicians like that, I would never want to do this because I'm like, why am I having a hardship? So why even bother doing it? Because other people are doing this. So just basically floating through to getting this all done without any problems because no one's sharing the fact that they're having issues and and stuff like that so yeah i do think bringing up having a conversation like we are right now could maybe help someone in some sort of way even outside of music it doesn't have to be with music it just music is just the the theme oh, i don't know. have enough friends for that <laughs> <laughs> no, um uh, is there is there anything in um is there anything in your life that you think I mean, this this you can go as sort of personal or not as you like. But mm -hmm. is there anything that you feel that you that you would want to change that you that you feel like that you're that you're working on that you think ah oh, this this is something that I want to improve at? And is there anything that you're consciously thinking about? And again, this I I don't want to be too personal. You can oh that's fine, it's fine. That, least, um, it's for me, I guess what I've been currently actively working on is managing a healthy expectation. I think um, in the past I would set myself up pretty much to fail and it would basically, basically create the cycle where that like you set yourself up you want to accomplish something and maybe unconsciously you know you're not going to but then you have the ability to 
go back to what's comfortable, which is like beating yourself or being like your shit, you suck, whatever it may be. So it just becomes a cycle of, okay, I'm going to set up this massive goal that's, that is really unattainable to do in a, such a short period of time. And then I know I'm going to fail. And then when I fail, I get to do my old, my favorite thing of just basically telling myself I'm shit and then repeat, 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 repeat. And that's kind of like how I, my cycle has always been for, for years. And I guess my, my point now is being okay with the little, uh, having like healthy expectations and then and that by not accomplishing those ex- expectations to, to maybe change my approach to it and try to approach it with more reason and more understanding and a little bit more empathy than being like the easy way, which for me is like, your shit, don't even bother doing this. Like you suck. Why even, why even show up every day? Like that's has been my conversation, you know, years ago. And I think my thing now is like managing a healthy expectation and talking to myself a little bit more respectfully. Um, and rather than like, it's not cool. Like the way I treat myself, I always say that if I treated other people the way I treat myself or have treated myself, like no one would want to be around me because I treat myself, I've treated myself very, very poorly. And I guess something that I, I try to do is, is manage a sense of expectations, manage a uh, realistic approach and being okay with just moving the needle a little bit forward. Like, yes, of course, we'd want to accomplish massive growth in a week, right? And and I think that deals with like maybe me not being patient, right? But it's unrealistic. And maybe some, maybe once in a blue moon, you'll, you'll, move, you'll accomplish this crazy goal in like a, a week or a month or a short period of time. And that's rewarding and that's fun and whatnot. But like, it, I think life is just the little steps that you're, you're combining over a period of time that kind of get you to go across um, versus these giant leaps. And sometimes you will have those giant leaps. Um, but I think realistically, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the little steps. It's moving the needle just an inch forward or a little bit more. And I think that's a challenge for me because I, it's way more rewarding to have these like massive leaps. And I think for me, it's just been managing my expectation. And then when not accomplishing, not accomplishing the expectation, understanding why, instead of just going, your shit. You know, and uh, that's something that I, I, I've been really actively working towards is just treating myself a lot better and setting myself up for more success um, rather than, you know, I always think like, you have to have these giant goals and you have to like have this giant pill to swallow in order to like to, to jump across. And I don't think that was the case because even though I would, would set myself up to try to do these massive things, if I didn't accomplish them, I would pretty much demean myself that I wouldn't even want to play the instrument. So like I was, if anything, I was going backwards instead of just like constantly moving the needle a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Like I would be like, Oh, I want to go all the way up here. And then this is my goal. I don't accomplish it. So then I just go, okay, you're shit. And then I demean myself to be like, I don't even like play my instrument or do anything I want to do. So I go further down here. So I'm just like, I just went backwards versus just like, I want to go here and then just kind of constantly moving the needle a little bit, a little bit. And next thing you know, you're here. And then you kind of can just rinse and repeat and, that's kind of been my approach, if if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think um, the it is like you say, like the last thing you said, the rinse and repeat. It is like you've got a it's maintenance, isn't it? It's not just like um, what it's not just like one moment of you know you don't just fix things and then it's like oh, it's fixed, you know. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 constantly chipping away. It's it's the, I tell everyone it's the consistency, mm. and there's some days that it's that I can, you know, we'll use guitars as, as, an, as an example. Like there's some days that I don't want to play guitar, but I, and maybe I only play guitar a quarter of what I normally play, but like I maintain that consistency. So then maybe tomorrow, maybe a day that I am feeling like better that I will be able to play a lot longer or going to the gym. Like there's some days I don't want to lift. And then I go to the gym and I lift and I still don't want to lift. I just go through the motions and I come home, but I'm like, at least like, if I looked at my day, I can check that off my list that I went. I mean, maybe I didn't, you know, move the needle significantly further. But like, if you look at my day from a ones and zeros binary perspective, like, can you answer the question? Did you do this? Yes or no? Yeah. The answer is yes. And there's not like a, a caveat or an asterisk of, but you didn't do this. No, 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 no. You, did you do this? Yes. or No, that's the question I'm asking. I'm not asking, did you change? Did you, did you go up 50 BPM on the guitar? That's not the question I'm asking. The question I'm asking is, did you play guitar today? And sometimes that's all you can do in the day. And being okay with that, you know, not, not being like, I need to accomplish this crazy goal of like being able to play something that I can barely play at 85 BPM to being able to be like, Oh, did I play it at, you know, 145? Yeah. That would be amazing to accomplish that in one day. But is that reasonable? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know? So, and then being, like I said, moving it a little bit more, it's, it's, it's been my approach. 
Yeah, I am. Um, I think we. Uh, I, I think the main, a big thing that I've noticed as well is it's so easy to become a bit lax with it because when you start to get into better head spaces, you start to think that you don't need help at all and you know from yourself i mean um mm -hmm. you can just you get into a better headspace you think oh, um yeah i'm playing my guitar a lot i'm you know being creative and being consistent whatever and then but i think it's quite a fragile balance if you don't maintain it and actually you know then it becomes susceptible to outside sources where you know um you could have a frustrating drive home from somewhere and all of a sudden if you don't have a stable positive mindset you can it can be quite fleeting i find um mm -hmm. i also noticed there's a fly flying around my room and i saw it go across my camera and then seemingly across yours at the same time <laughs> so I don't, I don't know how that happened um anyway yeah um but i think that maintenance maintenance in the good times is quite tricky to make yourself do because it's really hard to like you know things like journaling or like just being mindful of what where you are mentally i think it's so it's obviously it's like it's like how many times have you have you like googled um you know how to fall asleep at like three in the morning kind of thing you know it's like that's not the time to be googling that you know no 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 like it, that you know it, it's it's the same thing it's like i feel like we always try and fix things when they happen but we're not very good at preventing anything um well yeah because yeah, if you think about it like health a healthy thing is or being by just like regular like your health and well-being health is like preventative not like um not like uh what's it called like in that moment right like yeah. the best like again i i have to, I have to go to the dentist on monday and i guess my my I, no one likes going to the dentist right but like the best approach when going to the dentist is doing the things to prevent you from having the bigger things to do right like if you do the daily maintenance of like every day brushing and flossing it'll kind of prevent these bigger things from happening, right? Like prevent the having to get a root canal or having to get like a tooth drilled or a cavity or whatever. Like mm. when 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 you're in that position where you, then you need to get your tooth drilled, it's like, well, that's too late. You've already you've already done a bunch of things that prevented you or you didn't do a bunch of things to prevent that situation from happening. Now you have to solve it in a way more extreme way. Versus if you did the little bit of maintenance every single day, it would be less dramatic at the end. You might just need to go for a cleaning and then you're good to go. You don't need to get your teeth drilled or whatever it may be. And that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm like, all right, I just gotta go get a cleaning. And this is easier than years ago where it's like, I had to get a lot of work done because I'm in that moment trying to solve this this problem. But like the problem occurred because of neglect for a long period of time. And, and I think that's, we're all like you're saying, we're trying to solve the problem, but that's the point it's too late. Like, yeah, trying to solve the problem. Why can't I go to sleep at three in the morning? Mm. Just own the fact that you're awake at three o'clock in the morning and just ride that. Because the more you try to like fight the current, like you're just going against the tide, and that's way more frustrating than just own the fact that you're awake at three o'clock. And I do that all the time. I did it yesterday. I woke up at four in the morning. I could not go to sleep, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm staying awake." Mm -hmm. There's no reason not to. And then like I just got up and got myself coffee, and I just hung out, played guitar, or whatever. Yeah. And then I fell back asleep at like eight in the morning. But like, if I sat there at four o'clock in the morning trying to force myself to go to sleep for hours and hours and hours and hours. I might have fell asleep at eight o'clock in the morning, fine, but I wouldn't have been able to. I just own the fact that I was awake, and I just like did some stuff. I'm like, well, if I'm awake, might as well do stuff that you do if you're awake. Go get coffee, watch TV, play guitar, do whatever it may be, whatever you want to do, and uh, just kind of own it. It's, it's kind of what, what I do, uh, just for in regards to, to the sleeping situation. Instead of trying to solve that problem, yeah, just be like, all right, just just work with it. Like, just roll with the tide, rather than like trying to fight the current. You know. So that's the hardest that's thing to do. That's... It's like telling someone not to worry about something, isn't it? It's like, well, now I'm worried. Yeah, it's the same yeah thing. exactly. It, yeah, well, when, when, when I remember uh, it was like I was like 17, 18, and like we were like hanging out with a bunch of people, and like someone was like, oh, that's awkward. I didn't think it was awkward. Now I'm like sitting there thinking, was it awkward? Did you, now you just made it awkward by telling me that this was awkward. Yeah, yeah. No. And it, you just made it worse. You know, like you're saying, like, oh, you just don't worry about it. It's like, wait, what? Is there something for me to worry about? Because now I'm worried. You could have just said nothing. You could have just like let me just go down the thing, ignorant, being like nothing, nothing's on to worry about. Instead of telling someone, "Oh, don't worry about it," when you weren't worried about it in the first place. Mm. And uh, yeah, just own the fact that like, um, I don't know, like that you're in this position uh, instead of like fighting it. And that's like, I guess a big thing of of what I like to do is just like kind of ride the wave, and then the waves become a little less drastic. It's it versus always trying to fight the storm and going up against the storm that like you have no control over kind of is hard. And, and I think I, I, I just accept the fact that like where I'm at, like it's, it's like, you know, back to what we're saying about like the negative thoughts. I accept it. 
doesn't have these negative thoughts, I'm accepting it. I allow myself to have the moment with it. And it doesn't affect me as much versus telling myself, why am I having this? And I shouldn't be thinking this. I should be thinking this and blah, 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 and everything else like that. It just makes it worse for me versus just being like, just roll with it right now. And it, it feels like it doesn't last as long versus trying to like change everything about it. Yeah. Um, let's know this. I think it's rolling with, it's a bit like the surfing analogy would be going under the wave, you know, rather yeah. than trying to constantly, uh, Const- I mean, I'm, I'm from the UK. I've surfed all of like three times. And that's probably all, <laughs> I, mean, probably I, all I ever will surf. <laughs> I never surf. But yeah, it's definitely like I would think about that. It's like when you're at the beach and like the waves are coming and it's a lot harder to push yourself through the waves, right? Like whether you're surfing or just going in the ocean, like it's versus if you just kind of just like not fight it yeah. and you just like just just float and like let it just take you. I don't know. It's still a good time anyway. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, lessons. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So but, um, yeah I mean, uh, I know I just didn't answer that one question. I've been thinking about it. Uh, wanting to was, answer. There was, there was one question I was going to ask you, which, uh, that I asked earlier, which was, um, how does your music reflect? Is this what you talk about? How does this reflect oh, your personality? Well, I mean, it all depends on the song, but I think, I think, Anyone who knows me and listens to our music, they're like, this doesn't, this doesn't surprise me at all. Like, I'm a very aggressive, neurotic person. Uh, I'm a very emotional person. There's a lot of intensity to me. I mean, obviously, right now, I'm very calm. But, like, anyone who's ever been around me, there's, a, there's, a, there's an intensity to me. There's a, so, again, wh- why is Lunar Square sound the way it does? It's not because, like, I'm not that person, you know? Like, I'm a, I'm a very intense, aggressive, over-the-top person. Like, I try to dial everything to 11. Everything I want to do, it has to be dialed to 11 or it's, like, not worth doing um i'm an extreme person so like does our music reflect that a thousand percent um you know do i do i am i a very i'm extreme in many ways i'm extreme like you know in aggression i'm extreme like emotionally you know like uh and and that that shows up in our music you know it's not like a surprise i didn't i didn't like think this it's like oh this would be cool to do it's like no i'm being myself and that's kind of what comes out in our music is just allowing understanding who i am as a person but i'm also not doing much thinking i'm not like oh this riff is intense because i'm intense no like it just it just basically speaking the language that's basically mirroring myself I'll because be there's something the way yeah <laughs> yeah then it's just like oh then you're just like forcing yourself to be this thing that you're not so at, at times i'm just like people have asked me like students have like oh how do you like write like a an emotive song or a sad song it's just like you think i'm sitting there being like adam write a sad song sometimes i write the saddest songs that I, for me or what feels like the saddest in moments that I'm not sad at all, in moments that I'm, but it's just maybe reflecting a time that I was, or maybe, you know, reflecting an emotion that I have, or maybe a, an emotion that I'm having currently, but it's like unconscious under the surface. It's just allowing yourself to come through. And, and I think what allows yourself to come through is not like constantly putting like a logical spin on it is, is you know, the music that we write, it very much sounds like who I am as a person. And anyone who knows me, anyone who's been around me is not like shocked by it. They're like, yeah, you wrote this. This is you. Like this is 100 percent who you are. I've known you for years. Like you're the you're this type of person. And then you hear a song like "Into the Earth" being like intense aggression, and you're just like, yeah, no. Like I'm not this like super chill, like lax, go with the flow, like free spirit person. I'm a neurotic, <laughs> over the top aggressive, like uh, you know, intense person. And uh, our song kind of reflects that, um, so especially that one. In like a usual suspects kind of lineup, and they play your song people are going to know who to point at kind of deal. Like. Oh yeah. Like they, 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 again, if you, if you point, if you put all the members of my band in a row and, and then you hear a song, you're just like, okay, I know who exactly that is. Like anyone that, that like anyone that's been like friends with me or friends with the band can go easily just go. Yep. I know who that is easily, easily. Just cause it's just like who I am as a person. Like we're not surprised. Like I, um, anyone who knows me is not surprised. I, the, the way I, I hear your music is kind of um the, for me it's like i feel like it's like judgment day music where like I, <laughs> if, if i if this if i die and i've done some shitty things in my life if i then wake up and hear that music i'm like oh fuck i've not made it <laughs> like because <laughs> it's just it's so i think with the 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 grand kind of with all the strings and the and the backing to like this just like destructive music i think it, it that's to me that's how i hear it is that kind of it's like, oh, you, you got to judgment day and you fucked up. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, I guess that's the, my... thing, the thing for me is like, I just love everything being over the top. So mm-hmm. I'm going to throw everything in the, the kitchen sink. Cause you know, I, I love the, 
you know, less is more. Less is not more. Less is less. And sometimes less is necessary to to work with the song. But like more is more. If I'm just like, I want more of this, I'm fucking throwing everything at this. And like, who's going to tell me otherwise? Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to do literally nothing. I'm going to fucking put, I'm going to put 5,000 instruments in a song and, and all this, you know, all this, this whole symphony with playing things as fast as I want. You're not going to do anything about it. And you're not going to stop me. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. And, like, for me, it's just I love the over-the-top feeling. I love everything just being super intense. And I just, like, get, this is just an application of that intensity. It's just, like, cool, I want things to be more. So I'm going to put more in it. And there's no rules because, like, yeah. you know, we currently create in a free society. So, you know, it's not like, oh, if I write a bad song, you know, they're going to come take money out of my bank account or, like, start taking my, like, belongings. Like, you're not going to. Like, there's not, like, some just, like there's not, like some Facebook group that's just, like, oh, if you write a bad song, I, gotta, I own your PS5. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> so I can write a bad song. You can complain about it. And I still own my possession. So I don't, I don't have the pressure. I can just be myself. I can do whatever I want to do. You can either complain about it, but I'm still going to do it. And there's no one going to stop me. And I guess that, that arrogance, that energy, that, that sort of, like, I don't give a fuck mentality, it comes out in our music because there's – I put that those no rules no bounds no whatever like i can put three breakdowns in a song i can write a seven minute long song we can we can do anything we want to do we can have super epic you know ear pleasing moments and super dark moments in the same song why not you're not gonna do anything again it, it just there's no rules no filter kind of giving it to you however how i see and just being being honest is it comes out in our music and that's just kind of like my personality it's just like i'm going to do what i want to do and our music definitely reflects that because there's because people have told us for years oh you can't you can't you can't like do this you can't do that oh it's you're better off doing this it's like what the fuck do you know you just go to a local show mm-hmm. you work you work at cheesecake factory <laughs> you know like not, not, not diminishing that like but oh, you're not yeah, in yeah. a position you're not you're not you're not in a position to tell me what i can do the same way i'm not in a position to tell anyone to do what they want to do with their what their, what, what they do it's like you're not in a position to tell me anything and uh i can maybe hear it maybe some if i'm asking for it, but at the end of the day like no one has the right answer i just think we're all idiots just somewhere just unaware of it i'm aware that i'm an idiot <laughs> but we're all... at least i'm willing to, willing to accept it i love um you know tim minchin the uh sort of australian like songwriter comedian guy have you heard him no 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 well he anyway one of his lines i, I can't remember but i think i think the exact line is we're all just fucking monkeys in shoes <laughs> and that's like yeah i i say it all the time i'm like true? we're just i was like everyone's an idiot we just somewhere, somewhere just unaware of it and i'm aware that i don't know anything but at least i'm aware that i don't know anything some people just walk around with this sense of like i know everything and i, and I have this all correct it's like you don't have it correct none of us have it correct we I might think, think we have it correct, but we change our perspective on it like over and over and over again. So how do we actually have it correct? I think that's something I struggle with with conversations with people, it, whether it be politics or music or social things. Is like I feel like a lot, far too many people are far too sure that they're correct, um, regardless of what side of the argument they might be on. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like to. Th- I, I think you've got to have some conviction in your beliefs, otherwise, why do you believe them? You know, totally. But, I feel like you've got to be open to change and I feel like not many people, not sorry, there are a lot of people that, that are like that, but I feel like there are probably, from what I can tell, a few too many people that maybe aren't aware that like you can be, you could be wrong, like, you know, about X, Y, and Z, um, particularly people on the internet. Like, so for example, we're talking about, um, you know, comments and stuff on the internet and I, like I, said, I put up these reels and um, the, um, I think, I'm, I can't remember if this is one I mentioned earlier, but there was a, one where lots of comments came up because uh, a girl um in a band called harriet from over here very heavy kind of like um sludgy sort of thing um but anyway she was talking about rejecting commercialism in heavy metal like the idea that you can do kind of like what you're saying almost like you can do what you want you know and she doesn't see why a really heavy band can't be right up there with some of the less heavy bands you know right so many sort of gatekeepers in the comment section saying because she referenced slipknot and obviously, to some people, Slipknot is heavy. To some people, mm-hmm. it's like it's like their morning wake up alarm, you know. Um, right. But that's her perspective: is that it's it's it's, it's heavy, and everyone's going, "Oh, Slipknot's not heavy." Blah blah. blah. It's like, well, I have a opinion. Like, <laughs> you don't have to agree. Yeah. But you could tell it wasn't just a disagreement. It was like a, "You're stupid. You're wrong." It wasn't just like a, "I don't agree." It was a. It, it, there was some sort of malice behind it, which I found a bit sort of like, oh, "Really?" You know. Well, I think it's 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 a. I, identification it's like their own uh, egoic uh, they're identifying 
they're, they're, defend, they're, they're defending their identity, right? Like they've they've had their opinion, and their opinion is wrapped up in their identity. And then you're not they're they're not defending this topic; they are defending themselves and their view on this topic. So of course, everyone just goes to straight criticism or, or defense mechanism because you're not just defending this like this opinion or like perspective; you're defending yourself. So at that point. It's, there's there's things behind it that yeah, that was a fly in front of me. Uh, yeah, so I was like, I'm sure I saw one fly across my <laughs> yeah, screen. Yeah, I, I, I just I finally noticed it. I, just <laughs> thought, I thought it was like dust or something like that, but yeah, no, it wasn't. Um, it's a good reflection on both of our both of our clean. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so basically, like I think that a lot of it comes down to is they're using this topic to defend or build up themselves, and that's just like a that's just like a Trojan horse, if you will. To be like, oh, I'm using this this conversation to make myself feel valid or make others feel invalid, and I think that just like such a harmful place to be in, in my opinion, because like there is a possibility that you have this wrong, and I still stand that possibility that I could have it wrong. And then life is not about being right and wrong. I think it's about being what's effective and ineffective. And maybe my view is ineffective, so let's try to find a more effective view. Or maybe the view I have is effective to what I'm looking to accomplish. And to somebody else, that's ineffective. And we live in a world where there's so many different people who are allowed to have different perspectives. And to them, like, to my family, a band like Slipknot is the heaviest thing ever. But that's their perspective. Like, I could be like, oh, yeah, but, like, have you ever listened to Burzum? Or have you ever listened to fucking, I don't know. <laughs> my band <laughs> you know like to them it's like it, we and then some people like oh lauren shore is not heavy like it's not as heavy as blank it's like cool that's great i'm happy for you what does that mean mm. that you're right oh good now you're right mm. what now what are you gonna do you put on your resume i was right about this band being the heaviest thing cool you get paid the same price whether you do that or not <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i just don't think it's a, it's a it, what, what's the what's the end result it's like oh you feel superior you feel more intellectually superior or, or your opinion is right so you know you gotta you gotta make sure that you let people know that but like if someone's perspective is flipped out as the heaviest band what what does that serve in the world like what what if, what if they are wrong who cares who cares let it, like what, like it doesn't make a difference and i just don't know why people are so attached to just like getting their opinions out there and they just like and i get it you don't feel valid so you want to go to the internet to make yourself feel valid and, and you're artificially you're the little guy in the big truck so you're overcompensating you know you feel invalid in your world so you you artificially create yourself feeling valid in another world like totally understand it my heart goes out to you but at the end of the day like i don't know like people are allowed to have their opinions like and and is there you can disagree with someone but there's a healthy way to disagree with them there's no, there's no reason to attack people's character for for having an opinion on something that doesn't even change the world you know what i'm saying like someone being like i think so that's the heaviest band does not stop anything from happening it's just an opinion about what they listen to when you're not around. It's just like, what difference yeah. does it make? Like, and people like argue over it. People go on like Facebook groups and argue about who's the best deathcore vocalist. You like who you like, shut up and go on with yourself. You don't need to defend this person because you're not even them. Mm. But you want to sit there and be like, oh, this person's my favorite. Amazing. Own it. That has them being your favorite has nothing to do with what other vocalists sound like or what other bands sound like or, or, who cares just accept the fact of what you like and you don't need to defend it as if your identity is wrapped up in this thing just own what you like who cares and i just see so much of it and it's just like i i understand like and i and i totally get it and i totally try to understand where it comes from but it just doesn't serve the conversation of just gatekeeping like what is heavy what isn't heavy what's good what is right what is wrong and it's like it's coming from people who like they don't make the need they don't make the needle spin they're not like in the industry signing bands they're not a booking agent putting bands on tour they're not in a band themselves they're not a manager of a band that's like growing this industry you're a fan that literally just shit talks everything that isn't what you like hell yeah i love you for that because you do nothing <laughs> there's a yeah i um what was i gonna oh it's completely gone from my mind this always happens when i when i'm listening i'm like i'm like ah that was a good that was a good question and then it suddenly goes but um I'm sure I'll think of it as soon as as soon as we hang up the call. But, but um, the what so what what I think my um, the, funnily enough, the two of the people I've spoken to recently, one one including yourself, um, the, the the sort of the the main compliment I can sort of pay you, um, and I said this to Dean Lamb from Archspire not so long ago, um, his podcast coming out Monday actually, um, was that like I, so I saw you guys in Birmingham, um in when i can't remember when it was exactly you were here a few months ago um, yeah it was like i think it was like february march we were like, it yeah. was like the end of february into early march yeah that's when yeah. we were in, in the 
and I, I, I honestly, the, the, I was saying this to Dean, I was saying like, you know, sometimes you see a musician or like a band or something, or you hear a song where like, it, it's so like, it, it almost makes you want to like laugh because it's so good. Like, you know, when you see someone and you're like, what? And you just, and you, you want to, I was watching um the Dream Theater drum audition video. I don't know if you've seen that. And Jordan, uh-huh. is it Jordan Rudis, the keyboard guy, he um he was saying how he was watching one of the drummers and he wanted to laugh because it was just so good. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking that when me and a few of my friends were watching you guys, and we were when you get guys came on and started playing, and so much because I I was kind of aware of your music. I'd heard a little bit at that point. Um, you know when you hear a song and you know what it is, but you're not quite so familiar. So then see mm-hmm. the full thing live, and I was like, "Whoa, this is cool." So um, and I always save the compliments for the end of the podcast because I kind of think I don't want to, I don't want to f- start the whole thing going. I think you guys are awesome. Right, 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 right. Um, but yeah, I just, but anyway, thank you for for chatting. And I think so. All we've got to do, um, I need a question to prompt the next guest. It can be whatever you want. For uh, sure, but before I give that, do I did I answer all your questions? I know you had a lot of talking. You've I, I, you've answered, yeah. I've, you've got all my. Okay. I, I, is... I know, I know, I know, I rambled a bunch, so I don't know if I like uh, missed a um a question that you wanted to ask. Oh me, no, so honestly, like I, I'm I. The thing is, a lot of the, a lot of the things I've written down, uh, tie in in some way to what. Um, okay. Cool. How you've talked about things, because like, I think when you get when you start talking about the more um what's the word the, the more deep thing like meaningful things to how you approach life and stuff um mm-hmm. that almost answers a lot of the questions for me and there's a okay. few things here that i've written down and i just think like for example i wrote about you talked about um sort of approaching things from a narcissistic kind of place mm-hmm. times when if you're in that headspace um and i was i was going to ask kind of you know seeing about seeing things from the outside in but actually you've you've kind of answered that in 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 quite a lot of ways so i almost i look at some of them i kind of go like well we've we've actually the the way no like honestly i'm 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 happy i'm I'm all happy i think you've got i really like your perspective on things it's always refreshing to hear new takes on things because um yeah it's kind of what it's all about like sharing sharing the right kind of it's not right opinion is there but like the the hopefully talking about things in as close to the right way as you can uh, yeah i guess it's, so. i guess like a more effective way is because of kind of how i view it because it feels effective feels like you're not defending anything right feels like i gotta be right yeah. Effective being like it is an easier way of doing it like you may be doing something and someone's just like you're doing it such a ass backwards way but if that's your way that's your way but you you know there's, there's maybe an easier way to go about doing something you know and again when you're just like well i'm right versus being like you might be you might be correct. Like this is probably way harder to do this way than if I just like did it this way. So I just try to view it in that way because I don't know uh, what I used to view as being quote unquote right. I would never think that way anymore. Or what I viewed as being my way is is a way that I would never instill upon anyone anymore because I've changed my perspective on it. So I just feel like, is it effective anymore? Is it helping me get towards my goal? Is it helping me, you know, progress in some sort of way or or and again, if the answer is yes, then double down on it, own it, just go with it, go for it for now. Because again, we change all the time. We're not the same people we were even three months ago. So like why own this view of this thing so near and dear? And then you just force to protect this thing that like you're going to abandon it anytime anyway. So like, what's the point? I think, but yeah, as long as I, I hope, I hope I answer your question. I, thought, I, I hope you, I answered all your questions. And you've, 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 you have like answered all. And like, I only write down stuff just to like sort of what i think would be the fact is most of the time the conversation kind of guides itself doesn't it but um the, the one thing i did, was actually that i did think was interesting actually just not, the, the one thing i thought was interesting um <laughs> that um is actually i think what you're saying about effectiveness versus right and wrong is a real clincher that maybe people haven't locked onto in as much as they could because i think it really ties in with things like political views because Oh, it, totally. Whatever side of the spectrum you're on, or if you're somewhere in the middle, um, which most people are, um, you're not. There've been far too many times where I've been talking to people where they they don't think what I think is ineffective. They think it's wrong. You know, most of the time, most of us are looking to better the world and and land in pretty much the same place of everyone being in as good a place as possible. That's what most. There are a small minority that don't want that, but like that, those opinions need to be tackled in a very different way. Most mm-hmm. people want the best for everyone and then they will have different 
methods in their head of what the best way is to get there they might vote for that party over that party or they might you know believe that this thing's right versus the opposite but then we talk to each other as if their opinion is wrong when actually it might well not be the most effective method but actually all they're trying to do is get to the same outcome as you um and i think there's far too much of that in the whole political kind of discourse as well but i think it it comes right back to like small social interactions as well. I just thought that was an interesting, because that's how I look at a lot of these conversations too. Yeah, I just feel like a lot of it in, in that regard is in anything, you know, any sort of opinion, if you will, or or perspective, like everyone has their own different values and morals and what they what they hold near and dear closer to them or what's like, what makes their world spin. And then like to them, you're going to make decisions based off of that. And someone else may value something else. And, you know, let's, let's you know, being in bands with people like, over the years, like people have different values. Some people may value being on the road. Some people may value being home. And you, you're going to make decisions based off what you value. Like just use, use that a very basic example, very simple example. So like you're going to make it it's effective for me who wants to be home to be home, right? Like that's like that's my that's my viewpoint. It's not right to be home from tour, and it's not right to be on tour. It's just like for me, like I'd rather be home, and I, I prefer being home. And, and and they may rather be on the road. So like they value being on the road. So they're going to make decisions of well, I value being on the road. It's better to be on the road. So it's, it's right to be on the road, right? And that's just kind of how we view every situation that we, that someone may disagree with. Um, and versus being like, what, what, is, what is the end goal that I want to get to? And, and, and what do I find it being effective? And versus being like, my viewpoint is right and your viewpoint is wrong. It's just like, neither one of us is right and neither one of us was wrong. Like, we just have a different perspective on things. And, 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 and we value this thing versus which may be completely counterintuitive to that thing. And then when we approach it from the shame thing was you're wrong for not caring about these things. Like no one's going to listen. No one's going to care. No one's going to want to listen to you at this point. Now you just made them. Now you're just gonna, people are just going to do things in spite of you because you just now just soil that because you're just like, oh, well, why don't you, you should, you should care about these things. It's like, well, don't make me feel wrong because I don't, or, or don't make me, and, and that's not effective. Maybe just explain it in a way that like, is productive to and try to understand what I find, what my end result is, what my is, is that effective for my end result? If, if it's not, then, then I, I wouldn't care about it. But if, if, if part of thinking about things from that perspective is effective towards my goals and my values and what I view the world in, then that would be helpful to view it in, in that. But when you're just shaming someone because they don't agree with you, that's what we're doing is just just negatively projecting our whatever on other people and trying to shame them into being wrong. It's just like, why does that make the world a better place? Because you're so oh, I, I view things. Look at me, I can, I'm 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 a, I'm a, I'm a very uh, virtue person. I view things in the in the correct way. Cool, awesome. People don't like you. <laughs> <Nice to end. laughs> and people don't, and on that note, people don't like you. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, like, like people people don't like you when you approach yourself in this sort of like oh, I'm a great person. I'm so good. I do all these sort of things. It's like no one wants to be around that. No, no one wants to be around that person. Like you're, you're just shaming people and you're telling people they're wrong and you're just going around being the judge towards everyone. It's like you're not making the world a better place. You're making people not want to be around you. And that's, I don't know. That's, that to me feels ineffective. But you may be like, it's effective because I'm just, I'm, I'm always right. Yeah, I think. Um, Go on. <laughs> what was I? Um, I literally had it about two seconds ago. Um, but yeah, I think, I think there were a lot. Um, Ah, oh, I had a very specific example that's completely got out of my head. It was so effective. Ah, this always happens. I'm a professional, I promise. Um, we've disappointed all the guitar nerds today. They don't even know what strings you use. <laughs> uh, I, it's in I my bio. It in your I, bio. I remember yeah, seeing that. I do, I, do it, I do it as a joke because people yeah. always ask me. And I'm like, and, and I have some, I have some guitar player was like, I think as guitar players, we should just put our string gauge and all these like things in our bio. Like and, and it's kind of like a Tinder profile, like you're you're yeah. whatever maybe. Like I'm these are my stats. I'm this tall. I'm this that. The other thing, blah 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 blah. Versus being like I play Diodario, uh, sixty-eight to ten. I or ten to sixty-eight. I I use a I use a Jazz three Topex one point one four. I play bare. I play I've guitar bare knuckle pickups. I use a Kemper live, and these are the, these are the profiles that I use. Like just so I can not answer that question anymore. Swipe in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is a bit of a weird. Um, there's a bit of a weird gear. Yeah, I I think it's just more important to talk talk about this stuff. You know, like 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 joking aside. You, you know, things like string gauges and pickups you can put in your bio. You can't really put this in your bio. You know, but you can try. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much you probably get loads of like. Well, yeah, you probably get loads of people. You're wrong. You're wrong. And then you got to deal with all of that. Oh yeah, yeah. 
mm-hmm. people will ask me the question, what do you use? And this is the weirdest thing that happens a lot. People go, what do you use? And I explain them. They go, oh, yeah, well, I use this. It's like, <laughs> did you ask me this question so you could tell me what you use? I know. It's or almost, you... you know, when, when, uh, when kids come up to you and just start telling you things and you're like, oh, yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah, yeah, right? It's like, oh, did you like, I don't like this band. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Oh, that was not a question. I was I was just saying I'm listening to this. Oh, I didn't I don't listen to that. Yeah. I don't like that. I found I the um that came up quite a lot where um this is just going to literally sound like I'm doing the exact thing now. Um because I got like a, a couple of small endorsements with like uh, with Ben Ockel actually and with Victory um Victory Amps and the mm-hmm. the amount of times that the conversations where I've had where people are like, because I'm just, at, I was, I'm just at like an art artist level and en- entry level mm-hmm. kind of thing, like um, you know, in terms of like discounted stuff. Um, mm-hmm. at the, I know a lot of people in that kind of situation, and they will so they will almost ask me what I use, and I just say I use it. I don't say like oh, I'm an endorsed artist with, and then and then they will tell me oh yeah because I use this and I have an endorsement. You're like thanks, cool. Now I feel yeah, like I can tell you I have an endorsement. You, you didn't. You you didn't want to. You don't care what I'm using. You just want to tell yeah. me what you are using in a way that seems more that seems less dickish. But everyone can see yeah. right through it. Like, yeah. I just always found that very weird is that people would ask me questions like, "What are you? What are your thoughts on on uh, this thing?" I'd be like, "I don't know. I never use it. I, I play this, and it's just like, oh, I like it. I'm thinking about buying this." And it's like, <laughs> go ahead. It's like, it's like I don't. You don't. I'm not. I'm the worst person to ask a question. Like, if you're thinking about buying a a quad cortex don't ask me because i never use it so ask someone what their thoughts on it if you're interested in buying it like if you're like i want to use where like people will ask me oh what bare knuckle pickups do you use because i'm thinking about getting some that's a good conversation because it's like oh I, I have a place to ask that but if someone just like i don't like bare knuckle pickups i prefer using seymour duncan it's like what are we talking about like you're not asking me a question you just want to let me know what you use it's, it's just like- say just say you prefer this or your iPad, but there's a different way to have a conversation about it than like. Yeah. Well, it's just, just like two question. computers it's interfacing. Like it's just like, just noises going either way, and you're just talking at yeah. each other. Yeah, so it just it is very strange to me. It was it was always I've always like noticed that like I, like fans would ask me questions or like people would ask me like gear questions and they'd be like, oh, I never I never liked that. It's like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, I know that there's a lot of um. Yeah, I think it all comes. I mean, bringing it all back quite nicely. It does come from that place of it, it's tying in. Oh, that was the thing I was going to say about tying in. A lot of it. I really like what you said about tying in with identity. You know, a lot of yeah. tie with the gatekeeping and heavy metal. To a lot of people, heavy metal, even if it's nothing to do with their career or anything, they're just really passionate about it, and it's a part of their identity. And I think when a not so heavy band in their eyes maybe slipknot comes along that's a part of their identity leaving them because they obviously they're thinking well anyone if anyone likes slipknot then that doesn't make me different um right right so right 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 the, and, and um, i i've I, I understood it from a different perspective and i and i've had my own gripes with it um and a different thing so i um i love like comic books right like I, i'm a huge comic book nerd and and uh I love reading them and I love like, you know, I've just been growing up like with superheroes and, and then just reading comics in general. And when you have this like niche that was like you were kind of made fun of or it was not a cool thing to do. And then now that thing is like cool. You kind of feel like, well, that's not, I'm not as special anymore. Right. Like yeah. by me, like by, by me reading comics, like no one, it's not cool. It's never cool to go to a comic book store on a Friday and then new issue is out. Like it's not cool. Like Friday is like you go out and you party and not being like oh new amazing spider-man came out let me go make sure i get this like i think it's cool but again like it's not the 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 societal like this is cool right and when things are starting to become you start to see like random like people that that didn't fit the 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 demographic of like what you expect to be into that at first you're like oh no now i don't like this now i'm ashamed them i gotta i gotta i gotta test how well they know this or like the the name five songs of this band sort of thing like okay which ones do you read you always read the basic ones i read all like these ours i know all these things it's like okay like i like comics and i thought for me my perspective was i'm glad that something that i enjoy is reaching other people that maybe wouldn't and that makes this thing grow and it doesn't mean that like because the fact that i've been into this thing for a longer period of time or i've been into it when it wasn't cool or whatever it may be like does it mean anything less about myself like because for, for me with music is I want people to hear our band. I, I like when people that wouldn't listen to our band like our band. Like my favorite reaction channels are not reaction channels. Or when people react to our music, it's not the reaction channels of people that like are into our world. It's always coming from people that would never listen. Even if they hate it, I'm like, at least you checked it out. Like to me, it's like 
that has a there's, a there's a possibility you may like this and you may open up your perspective to this or you may hate it but at least you gave it a chance and i feel there's no reason to prevent people from coming into this thing because at one point you came into this thing and you were and you were uh you were brand new to this so why why do you have the ability to be brand new to this and someone else doesn't why is that fair how is that right if we want to i want this thing to grow and i want it to be to reach as many people as possible because that's what it's here for it's not here to be like i only wanted to reach certain people like no i want anyone who wants to listen to it and wants to enjoy it listen to it because at some point you didn't know who fucking any of these bands were like people are getting upset because of like uh metallica and stranger yeah right? yeah but it's like for me i'm like when i saw that as a fan of like first off i was so happy my big, and my favorite song by Metallica, to see that in a show that I like, I'm like, that's amazing. Some people are like upset because people who no, have no idea who Metallica is, is like getting upset because of the fact that they don't, they're not, they're not informed enough. It's like, who cares? They, they found a song that like is sick and now they enjoy it. Like, isn't that the point? Or is the point to be like, you've been here since the get-go because I haven't been a fan of Metallica since the get-go because it came out before I was fucking born. So what's the, so what, what are we, what are we even getting towards? And I, and I, uh, I think back to the whole comic book thing. Once, like, once I started seeing like more everyday people being interested in superheroes and being interested in like Marvel like characters and like going to see these Marvel movies and whatnot, like whether my opinions on them are, are are what they are, like it's just still cool that people that normally wouldn't are now being open to this thing. And I think that we should. I, I try to offer that same grace towards anybody. You know, it's not like certain people are allowed to do certain things. Like everyone should be allowed to, and you know, enjoy metal. Whether you are just a normal person, whether you've been into metal your entire life, whether you just stumbled across this on the internet, like, that's the point, like, and the same thing goes for, you know, whether you have been reading comics since you were a child to like, you watch Avengers and you're like, I think this is cool. I kind of want to dive deeper into it. Like, why not? Why prevent people from enjoying this? Cause you're just ruining it for everyone else. And like, honestly, I don't have a reason. There's no reason to have any sort of gatekeeper in this because for what, what do you do? You just make you just turn people off from this thing. You to, to by by letting people know that Slipknot's not the heaviest band. Hell yeah, dude, go away. Go 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 keep go talk to yourself or something like that, or fucking find something else to do because you're not really helping the cause, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I was really happy when I saw Stranger. Th um, well, I don't watch Stranger Things, but when I saw the phenomenon of because um, obviously it happened to uh, that, that that Kate Bush song, didn't it? Um, yeah, and then I obviously that, I didn't know what that was. No, I, I mean, I knew I knew who she existed, but I didn't really know any of her music. But I um, I'd say I'm a bit fed up with the song now. I've just heard it so many times. But oh yeah, um, that's different, isn't it? But I mean, um, I was really happy if you look at the charts on Spotify. Master of Puppets is up there somewhere, and I I, I, I do wonder if one day we'll have like the a one day maybe not that far in, down the line where we'll have that sort of uh where metal has a bit more of a place you know like a place in the mainstream whether it will or not i don't know and what, maybe that will be a good thing maybe it'll be a terrible thing i don't know but can only find out you know yeah i mean and like and, and if it does happen cool but it'll, let it happen organically and like i think it's cool for me that like you're starting to see metal in, in the mainstream because you wouldn't have seen metallica i mean maybe metallica but like you wouldn't have seen like master of puppets if you will like in a tv show yeah no. like more recently like and i think that's to me, that's awesome. And I think it fits because, again, it's a TV show that takes place in the 80s. The song just came out in the 80s. Like, it's a sick song played by a dude who's like a stereotypical, like, metalhead. Like, yeah. Why are we upset? Like, that's obvious, you know? Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, the argument of just, like, now what? You're upset that, like, some random, like, person who would never hear Metallica is hearing Metallica. Like, that is the whole point. Like, that's awesome. And I don't know. For me, like, that is a win, in my opinion. It's not a it's not like a. I gotta defend it because I don't want people that don't that don't know this thing to 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 keep this like thing sacred. And why? Like share it. It's cool. It's a good song. People, more people should hear that. There's all there's too many shitty songs in the world <laughs> that exist. Why not like let people hear like good songs? Because that song's a ripper. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I I never understood the whole Metallica thing that where people came along and sort of went, oh, that's not proper metal, or you know, you're like what? You're like. I, yeah, it's above my. I don't understand it. I think Metallica is awesome. Um, I, I don't. I don't get the. Uh, I think there's again. There's that sense of gatekeeping. Oh, it's not heavy anymore. It's like you know. It's just. Uh, I don't know. I think the the main message is to try and sort of share the uh, share the. I don't say share the love, but share the enthusiasm for things. Yeah, like because again, at, at some point you were new to this. At some point you just fell into this. Mm. So why not give that 
person that same grace because if if you approach you when you first fell into this, you'd probably be turned off by it. If you if someone fell into this and, and then you're like, you don't know all these sort of things. How do you not know all these songs and, and blah, blah, blah? You're not supposed to listen to it. You're just a whatever, whatever, whatever. Or or I know everything. It's just like you'd be like, fuck this person. I'm not going to I'm not interested in this. You just turned me off from this thing versus being more. I mean, again, you can obviously educate people, uh, include people and just like explain stuff to someone, but don't make them feel wrong for something they just found out about yesterday because yeah. you wouldn't like it either. And, and and you wouldn't be where you're at now. And maybe that'd be a good thing. <laughs> I, um, keeping somebody, you know? <laughs> weirdly i am um, yeah because i have the quite easy easy access into metal in that it's quite a typical way in that my dad likes right. classic rock and stuff and but i remember getting the uh i got into pantera way like earlier than i think a lot of people do in their metal you know um i always describe it like coffee like metal like you you start with like your milky iced latte with vanilla in it and that's your like you really like radio friendly metal but then you have a slightly stronger coffee which might be like i don't know like a lighter slipknot song and you're like well that's mm-hmm. quite good and then you try the lighter coffee and you're like well, that's not that good anymore i like the <laughs> i like the, the 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 stronger coffee and i feel like what happens with metal is you get this kind of you get this appreciation of like actually sometimes you end up going down the heavy rabbit hole so um if it gets someone started you know um it, getting into that journey of enjoying a different type of music and being enthusiastic. I think it's sick. Yeah, I think it's sick. I mean, because I went, I worked backwards. Because like, I got into like, like metalcore and like deathcore, right? And like, I didn't, I didn't grow up with like, I was around. I didn't have like really any like family. I had, like maybe one cousin who I saw his like Metallica poster when I was a kid. But like, I thought like I was like I want to listen to this. I was like terrified. I was like seven. I was seeing mm-hmm. or this like Ozzy poster. I'll never forget. It was like Ozzy hitchhiking and like on the hitch on like the piece of cardboard it said hell. And I'm like seven, and being like, what the fuck is this? And then he's like, oh, yeah, he'd been ahead I off the bat. I think I was in you what that was. <laughs> he's like, he'd been ahead off the bat. I was like, why do you listen to this? Like, I, I'm, i what? But so I just knew of, like, that stuff. But then once I got into, like, heavier music, I worked backwards. And I, then I found out about, like, going backwards and listening to, like, Metallica, listening to, like, all the 80s, like, classic, like, thrash metal bands or, like, you know, uh, listening to Ozzy and listening to just kind of like starting up here listening to like screaming heavy like music like you know any metalcore any deathcore at that point in time and then kind of going the other way because I, I wasn't exposed to it as a kid like or, or i didn't find value in it um but yeah i mean everyone 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 has their own story and, and i just think everyone can kind of find their way too and I, and I get more excited about someone finding out about this thing and being excited about it than someone who's just like i've been here the whole time and this is fucking this is lame and just like okay then go find you need to find something else yeah yeah there's um i like i liked i think that's a good um a good message uh, and um and yeah i think that just a general appreciation for encouraging other people in that way and a, sort of spreading the positivity is a good for me that's a good a good note to kind of to close on because i think it's it's yeah. a, like a wholesome kind of um i think it, it hopefully sums up what what we're trying to talk, try to talk yeah about. i mean that's just that's just my whole thing it's just like i don't know I, we as musicians have an ability to do what we want and it's a gift and it's a and like a gift not since like a skill but it's like you know i get to do this thing it's amazing i like I'm, it's a blessing every day to, to as much as at times i can't stand it i'm like tired of doing stuff for the band but like it's a it's a blessing to be able to do this and and, and i want to kind of approach my role is to include people into wanting to do this or wanting to be exposed to it any sort of way whether it be just a fan of it whether it be like you want to go down the the route of becoming a musician or you want to like you know change and make this a career thing or this is just like it's just fun for you to play an instrument like whatever it may be like and whatever that works for you is, is cool it's just i don't know i i i find enjoyment in this and and then you just kind of want other people to find enjoyment in it and, and and to whatever level that seems seems, seems appropriate to them mm-hmm. um but yeah that's kind of like my whole philosophy is it's kind of demystifying it you know i guess if you will i kind of think my first initial point my first initial point was just yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bring 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 an honest human you know approach to it rather than this sort of like look at me i'm a whatever sort of person and look at all my accolades just like i don't know i play guitar i like playing music i like talking to people whatever it may be you know like it's it's weirdly really simple fine. isn't it it's like i like this and i'm gonna do this it's pretty simple it's, and everyone says i'm the most complicated person but i'm pretty simple i just like playing music and i like playing songs and like i get to do it like that's a that's amazing because you know not many people can get to wake up every day and like fulfill like a teenage dream like i get to and it's, it's awesome and, and i try to remind myself on a regular basis of that but well, we'll just i don't want to forget, forget i don't want to forget your question so what i want the next person to answer yeah and i need you to recommend an artist as well 
Okay, the artist record to listen to is the it can be anyone. Peel, Peeling Flesh. They're they're a band from Oklahoma City. Uh, cool. Check out Peeling Flesh. They're great. Um, they're super heavy, heavier than us. Oh. Um, if we have to, if you have to rate rate them on a scale, because you know people care, people care about that stuff. But oh, I think sure, heavy. Yeah, no, that's 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 okay. I don't. What do I need to prove? <laughs> um, yeah, Peeling Flesh, Oklahoma City. Check them out. They're great. Um, and a question I would ask for somebody is. Hmm. Put you on the spot now. Yeah. Th- so that obviously, so that this will start the conversation. So you can you can uh, drop me in it if you want to with the most ridiculous question, or you can ask a, a thought provoking one, or a how's okay. Your so, <laughs> um. Damn it! There's so many different questions I would ask, but I I I want to I want to steer the direction the conversation in the direction that's, that's valuable. Um. Depends what you find valuable. We talked about this. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We all we all measure that ourselves. Um, I think if you were to be okay, I'll go back to the superhero thing. If you were to have a superpower, what would you do? Yeah. Or what would what would it be, and what would you do with it? Like, if you got a, a superpower and you can do this thing, would you use it for good? Would you would you would you become a villain? And why would why would you want to use that? And why would you want to use it for good or evil? So I've got there's good and bad news. There's the you good. That's the bad news, but not in the way you've asked. Someone has asked the okay. superpower question, but okay. they haven't said what would you do with it or and, and why, which is an interesting I would, thing. Just I def- would think about that. Like I would, I would definitely be evil. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I was, um, or I'd be, I'd be an antihero. Like I would definitely be like, a, or a vigilante, or some sort of like, ooh. you're you're doing good in the world, but like people are not like. Yeah. approving of it you know like that we're like an anti-hero if you will like yeah but well, i probably i probably for a little bit rob the bank like if i was like, <laughs> pieces. I'd definitely be like i'd oh, probably rob it but then i'd give the money back or i'd robin hood it and give it to charity oh hell no i bought you gas is too expensive these days <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true, <actually. laughs> the um i i was talking to uh so the so jacob um who was it jacob umansky asked that question to the next uh uh megan uh target who's in a band called vex that's sort of a metal band a uk metal band and and she said like oh i'd love to be like a really good musician i was like fuck that i'm flying like <laughs> yeah, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna be yeah i'm some sort of thing like or, or like if you could be a superhero which one would you be and Ooh. what what would you do with it you know what i'm saying like okay okay, would let's, you be... okay let's go with if you could be a specific superhero and what would right. you do with it what would you do? Would you would you go down the same route and like follow their path, or would you Ooh, do yeah. a different thing, or like what 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 story would you create for yourself, and why? Superhero. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a cool different spin. I'm worried about how uh, uh how many uh of physique because I've been doing this this like little tradition that long, so I guess we'll have to see what. I've had people ask if they shit themselves on stage and stuff, and I've had to ask that to someone that I've known for all of three minutes, so it's uh, <laughs> not done. And, and have you peed in the pool? So you've you've. To be fair, you've you've put me in a nice position, so um, so thank you for that. And is there any last thing you want to plug or or promote to the world? I mean, no. I mean, uh, thank you for having me on to so talk to me about stuff that I don't. I give me a space to uh, speak on maybe different topics other than what's my temper patch <laughs> and what's my favorite city. We can just like roll credits with all of that if you want. Yeah, 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 just yeah. yeah. Like a, but with like I, the, dun, 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 you know, just like. <laughs> To be able to speak on like my perspectives, my views, and and uh, stuff that like I I like thinking of and talking about with people, it's I appreciate having the space to do that because uh, yeah, so that's definitely I'm just grateful to be able to do this. Well, I'm grateful that you're grateful. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. <laughs>